Hey, I'm Mark Romanak, and you're watching another episode of Fishing 411. It's the middle of April. It's a beautiful day. We're on the west side of Lake Michigan. Take a couple guesses what we're going to try and catch today. Hey, we got a couple of fishermen on board that are going to help us out today. Uh, first off, we got Jared Higginbotham that's all the way from Granger, Washington. That's where Yakima Bait is at. In fact, that's who he works for is Yakima Bait. He's going to be showing us some new crankbaits called Maglip. And then, of course, we also have Captain Jake Romanak who's at the helm today. Between us, we got a lot of knowledge of fishing. Hopefully, we can get some fish in the boat. So we're just getting set up here today and we're setting up next to a power plant. What a power plant does is it has a warm water discharge. And that discharge is putting two to three degrees warmer temperature out here and these fish are stacking up in this warmer temperature. So we're looking for the warmest available water. We're making our first pass down. We'll see if there's some, some fish around. You gotta love it when you see them jumping out back there and the water splashing. That is awesome, man. That board just ripped back. Oh, it ripped back. And you see the splash in the back, man? That's what it's all about. We actually just got in the stained water. We were in a little bit cleaner water. That's the thing about brown trout fishing is if you can find some stained water, you know, you're going to find fish. So we just got in this water. That is awesome. That is awesome. Just made the turn and bam, fish on. <laughs> Whoa, oh, man, he's thumping. He is not you don't happy. You want to grab that board. <laughs> he don't Look want to grab that. that board. He wants to rip some line. That is awesome. Man, when you hear the real singing, that's awesome. He ripped that board about 25 feet back. Yeah, he, he did. almost had it. <laughs> Here, I'll get her off now. There we go. Board's off, free the fish. There you go, man. Gotta love rod pumping action in the morning. <laughs> oh, a little drag ripping. That's a big fish, man. Oh, coming back to the other side. Tell you what, man, this is why I like that Maxima fishing line right here. I fish this a lot back home, and it's reliable. Fishing the 3.5 mag, we're about uh, 80 feet back on the board, running about 1.9 to 2.4 miles an hour. And uh, fish likes it. Which is a great speed for the maglip. You know, the maglip uh, picks up that skip beat action at about 1.25 to 1.5 miles an hour. And those fish love that. That uh, skip beat action, that pause, stop, and uh, move again. Man, those fish love that action. So we're, we're fishing in the Milwaukee area, and, and we're, it's known area for big brown trout. So I really want to see this oh, fish. Oh, there's a little flash. Man, that is a nice fish, dude. That is a dandy. Yeah, he's got that plug just chump. Ooh. It's not hooked all the greatest there, right in the corner. Oh, get him in there, Jacob! Oh, no! Yeah, buddy! That's a lot of fish for That's that net. That's a lot of fish for that net, my friend. <laughs> nice fish. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you never know what surprises come when you're fishing a maglip. Out here brown trout fishing and boom, spring king. 3.5 blue pirate. That is awesome. That's a great surprise. I love it. So is the fish. So this style of fishing is really, really simple and that's what makes it so much fun. We're taking our 3.5 maglip 
and putting it back and hooking it up to a planer board. What I'm doing is I'm putting leads from 60 to about 80 feet, and I'm using the Precision Trolling app to tell me how deep I am. Brown trout are structure-loving fish, so pretty close to bottom is what we're trying to target today. We're getting right down in that, in that target zone. So what we're doing is we're, we'll go ahead and we'll set this back, we'll zero out our line counter, and send that maglet back about, I'm gonna set this one about 70 feet back. And then I'll hook it up to the board and send it out to the side. That's why this style of fishing is so much fun. There's not a lot to it. Oh, there's a fish. Man. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that board. Fish on. Get the clicker off here. Man, that fish, that board just went back too. Rip back. I love it when you take the pictures of fish and the next board goes off. That's awesome. That is awesome. We just got that nice king. And that was that was a lot of fun. You know, we're only using 12-pound test monofilament here for these for these springtime browns. So, in fact, we're using the same gear we use for walleye fishing, and it just made it a riot catching those that big spring spring king. Oh, for sure, man. And I tell you what, like I say, that maximum line. I fish it at home all the time, so I knew I could put a lot of stress on that. <laughs> Out here fishing on a beautiful day like this, they're all nice. Fish. Yeah, you can't beat today. No, it's April and it's. Sunny, no wind, beautiful day out. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, nice little brown trout. Beautiful fish. That's, that's a nice fish. Mouth wide open. They are. There we go. There we go. <laughs> look at that. That's an awesome fish. Back to back, those are awesome. Oh, look at that fish. That is a gorgeous springtime brown trout. It is so much fun to come out here early spring like this, shake off the cobwebs, and catch fish like this. Garrett, that was awesome. That was awesome. Look at the beautiful spots on this fish. They're just gorgeous great. fish. We're going to go ahead and get this one right back in the water. <laughs> but man, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Additional considerations provided by Lowrance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV, Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. So what we're doing is we're making long passes downwind. So after we make a long pass and catch a couple fish, we'll come all the way back up and make reset up and make another long pass down. What that does is it's keeping our speed controlled, and that way we can get the boat control, speed control, everything together, and it's working out great. This is actually our maiden voyage with the new boat, the STX 2050 from StarCraft. And you probably noticed already from the photographs, it's got a very unique engine on it. It's the new G2 E-Tech by Evinrude. Um, this is the coolest boat I think I've ever personally owned. Uh, going back over the years, I've been doing this a while. I think this is my 36th fishing boat that I personally own. Um, and this is by far the coolest one. And uh, there's some neat features about this. And as we get into this fishing show today, you'll see some of what these features are. But uh, right now, it is just an awesome platform to be on the water with. And we just can't wait to get out and see if we can't get something hanging on our string. There's a fish right there. That board just ripped back. It looks like another brown trout. And just by the way that they, they pull the boards back. You know, that last king we caught really ripped the board back. This fish right here, just nice, easy pullback, almost like walleye fishing. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun, though. Now rigging these boards to release, so when this board comes up to the back of the boat and Jared takes it off for me, you'll see what I mean. The board actually released from the front clip and dangled on the back and that fish came right to the back of the boat. I didn't have to clear any lines. It worked out perfect. Definitely a cool method of fishing. You're clear. There we go. It's that easy. Yeah. So what we're looking for when you come out here brown trout fishing, or just fishing in the spring in general, is we're looking for a little bit of stained water. There's a lot of water out here. Lake Michigan is a huge body of water. And what we do is we're kind of trolling around and looking, and we just found an area where there's some stained, dirty water. What I look for is a little bit warmer water and a little bit stained water. And a lot of times when you find that stained water, that dirty water is right in, mixed in with it. So these fish are stacked up in here. Whoa. <laughs> Try to keep them out of that line. These fish are stacked up in here and we're making passes. There we go. Nice fish. Nice fish. So this is a nice little brown. This one's going to be a perfect one for the smoker. We haven't choked it pretty good and he's bleeding pretty bad and we don't want to release a hurt fish. So we're going to keep this one. They're great eating fish. <laughs> we're going to keep fishing. So the cool thing about offshore tackle is you can customize your planer boards to whatever fits your needs. What I mean by that is you can change the releases out. Like this planer board I have right here has an OR18 release on it. That's a snapper style release and when you close it, it stays fixed main on the line. 
Then there's this style board right here, and this is how a board comes rigged, custom in the package now. It's got an OR19 release on the front and an OR16 release on the back. When you use an OR19, what you can do is you can release the line. What I mean by that is I can release this front release, it'll pop, and then it'll just hang on this 16 on the back. That way you can clear lines and you don't have to bring boards in. Both methods are super effective. It all comes down to how you want to customize your board. <laughs> We've got another fish on here. Some hot and heavy action. We're running a little different method on this one. A little dropper, uh, dropper weight with a flat line the mag up out the back. Um, great way to run inside of your board. And they're easy to clear when your boards do come in. So we can drag this one in right here. Oh! <laughs> jumped right in the net. Nice like, I fish, think I want to get in there. Nice job, Jake. That was awesome. That was awesome. So we came out here, we're doing some fishing with some boards, and we had a couple open spaces on the back of the boat, so I thought we'd do something we kind of do out west. Very simple rig, and what we do here is you simply just tie on a slide of bead on your line. You can see I have a, a slide swivel right there with a snap, and then another bead to a swivel. So the beads, what they do is they serve two purposes. They keep your line from getting tangled, and as this bead comes down and bumps this knot, it doesn't damage the knot. And you don't have the chance of this swivel coming down and getting tangled up. We're running about an 18, 20 inch dropper, to a three ounce lead. And this is free sliding here. And so as the fish grab it, they don't feel any restrictions on the, on the bait. So whether you're fishing a actual bait or fishing a hard lure, this is a great way to do this. No restrictions, you can feel the rod and get the fish. And it comes down to about a five foot leader direct to the Maglip 3.0. The reason we're running the 3.0 is with a dropper is because we're fishing a little bit deeper water. And we wanted to get this plug down towards the bottom. And as you can see, we had some success doing so. Well, brown trout fishing in the Milwaukee area gets started earlier than in any other parts of the country. In fact, as soon as the ice comes out here, they're fishing. So in some years, it's as early as February, and the average year, it's in the middle of March. We had a really bad winter in the winter of 2015, so we didn't actually get open water here until about early April. And uh, our trip was actually planned for about the middle of April, which seems to be just about peak this year. Additional considerations provided by Bait Rigs Tackle and by Fishhawk Electronics. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. Well, our ants makes both a button unit and a touchscreen unit. This unit that I have behind me right here is the HDS7, and it's the touchscreen unit. I really like using it because it's user friendly. Now, let me show you what I mean. If a buddy calls me and tells me he's catching fish in one spot, I can go right up here in the top corner and touch new waypoint. Then I can type it in really fast, really easy. With a button unit, you have to scroll through almost like an old cell phone to, to type in the numbers. This is all right here. I can type the numbers in fast, easy, and it's really Really, really fast and effective. Because of that, that's why you're going to see these HDS touch units on my boat. Just about any time you're talking about brown trout fishing in the spring, there's a pretty good chance you're talking about fishing in shallow water, or what I call skinny water. Uh, for the most part, we never fished any deeper than about 20 to 22 feet. Most of our fish came in that 16 to 18 foot range. And as is often the case with brown trout, they were glued tight to the bottom. So we were hammering our plugs right into the bottom in order to trigger strikes. So the rod holders that we're using today are from Cisco. And for our planer board rods, we're using a tree style rod holder. What that does is it gets your rods up and out of the boat. There's a lot of different styles of rod holders, but the nice thing about the trees is you don't have to worry about the butt of the rods being in the boat. Everything is on the outside of the boat. Then we go a little bit further down and we have another tube style rod holder. What that's for is when we have bigger fish on and we need to rotate or move rods to get other rods out of the way, we can put them in this tube style rod holder. And then of course on our flat lines, right on the corners of the boat, we have this saddle style rod holder. And there's a fish on it right there, man. Bam! <laughs> Perfect. Man, you could have timed that that any better, couldn't buddy. have been any better. That was awesome. He stumped it. That water rod holder works pretty good. <laughs> yeah, the nice thing about that cradle is it's easy to get the rod out of the holder. And this is a big fish here too. This is a very nice fish. But it's easy to get the rod out of the holder just like just like right there. Man, that was awesome. I'm glad that was that awesome. waited for you to do that segment. That was really nice of that, that was fish. Great. That was very nice <laughs> of that fish. Very courteous fish here in Lake Michigan. This is a big fish too, buddy. Yeah, it is. It's a dandy. 3.0 and that mother of pearl's been hot last two passes. This is a big fish. There Ooh. you go. <laughs> Another one in the net. That's awesome. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, that, that's a sure. nice fish. That is a nice fish. 
So this is on that Drapper rig that Jared was just talking about a little bit ago, and it's been pretty effective today. I think this is probably the third fish we've caught on that rig. Yeah, yeah. And this is, it's a lot of fun. It's just straight right back behind the boat, and we're using light action rods. The rods that we're using are our bottom bouncer rods that we use for walleye fishing. So it makes it a lot of fun. You can feel every head shake. And That's you're gonna awesome. see that take down, that whoop, 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 that pump, thump. Man, I get your blood boiling every time. Yeah. Every time. Man, that's a gorgeous fish. That's a beautiful fish. Today we're out here on Lake Michigan and I want to introduce you to a new friend of the family. This is the Maglip 3.0. This is a smaller size for the original Maglip sizes, which are the 3.5, 4.5, and 5.0. This bait was created due to the uh, increased interest of a smaller profile bait for those low clear water situations. And also sometimes those fish just key in on a smaller size. This bait maintains a skip beat action, the same as the other sizes of Maglip. Its maximum dive capability is 17 feet on 10 pound test. You can check this out on the Precision Trolling Data app, which is a very useful tool when fishing this plug because it gives you that extra bit of confidence knowing where your bait is at all times. This bait is kind of taking the world by storm right now because it's something new no one has ever seen, you know, as far as a bait that runs up to four miles an hour, stays down and maintains this lively hunting action that you're looking for when that is superior when catching fish. There's a fish, man. Right on, back in action. There. We just came up to make our next pass down. And it seems like the top end of our pass seems to be a little bit more productive for us. And this dirty water is what we've been looking for all day. And this is the dirtiest of the water. It's still, what I mean by dirty water is it's just stained. It's, it's, it's lightly stained. Um, it's, it's pretty dark green, kind of chalky color. I can look down and I can still see the prop to my outboard. That tells me that there's at least two feet visibility. So when I see chocolate or dirty water, I don't want to be, there's another fish right there. Oh, and he just come off. He just jumped at the back of the boat. We just about had a double on. Double. But what you're looking for with that, with that stained water is, is enough that you still have visibility and, and the fish can still see it. He's right here at the back of the boat. But not, in, but not too dirty where the fish can't see your lures. There we go. <laughs> There's another beautiful brown. Yeah, we've had just a ton of fun. It's been a lot of fun fishing with Jared. We're gonna go ahead and get this fish right back in the water. I can't get over how pretty these fish are. Additional considerations provided by Mustang Survival and by Motor Guide Electric Motors. Additional considerations provided by Eagle Marine Service and by Ontario's Algoma Country. That real. Well, I guess sometimes you don't necessarily need everything out. As we're letting this one out, I feel the rod rip out of my hand, and boom, fish on. You can see the chrome flashing in the back. That's a, that's a good way to start a pass. I think we got one rod out. That's a great way to start. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I just put on a fresh new 3.5 Magalint in the color we call the Payday, and obviously it's Payday. <laughs> Let me come around you here. All right. That's a very nice fish. Yeah. It might be the biggest one we've had all day. That's an awesome fish. <laughs> yeah! It's payday! That is awesome. <laughs> it's payday! What a gorgeous fish. All day long we've been talking about how beautiful and fat these little guys are. That's a beautiful fish. Beautiful. So we had two Siwash hooks on here today. Uh, sometimes it's good just to switch it up a little bit, may give the plug a hair different action, but uh, great way to get a fish to be able to release a quality fish like that brown we just put in the boat. So these brown trout really like being on the bottom. If your bait doesn't come back looking like this one right here with the lip chewed off of it, you're not doing it right. We're running these baits right in the dirt and that's what's getting these fish to trigger and that's how we're getting them in the boat today. So one of the more common questions that I get asked is how far out should you fish your planer boards? Now on a day like today, we're fishing stained water. My furthest board is about 75 feet out and then in from that. When I'm fishing a little bit cleaner water, I try to get my boards a little bit further out, stretching them out in that 100 to 125 feet range. The further you get the boards away in clear water, the better off you'll be. Because this water's a little stained, we can get away with keeping the boards just a little bit closer to the boat. Well, our Lake Michigan brown trout fishing adventure was actually set in the southern part of Lake Michigan and Wisconsin waters. We stayed in a little town called Franklin, which is just a little bit south of Milwaukee. And uh, we fished out of a place called Bender Park. Now, Bender Park is kind of a neat location because from this location, you can actually run south about seven miles to Racine if you want, which is good fishing as well. Or you can run about the equal distance, about seven miles north up to Milwaukee Harbor, which is world famous for its brown trout fishing. 
A really cool feature that comes standard in an STX 2050 by StarCraft is this washdown pump. You know, every fishing boat needs a washdown pump. We're out here brown trout and salmon fishing today, and I tell you what, there's slime and blood all over the place so we can wash it right down. You don't have to worry about slipping and falling. A really, really cool feature. Man, this is a nice fish, Jared. Yeah. That was the outside board, right? Outside board. We just got them all reset. Um, oh, man, oh, man. oh, yeah. This is a big a fish. top show action in the this back. This is a big fish. Yeah, you love to see that chrome flash in the back. <laughs> that is sweet. That's, this is what we've been out oh, here for. Oh, look at that flashing back there, man. Yeah, yeah this is that, that caliber of brown that, that you come out here to fish for. Man. Let me get this board for you, buddy. Get some. All right. There he is. It pulled back tight on him. He's kind of swimming towards the boat here a little bit. I think he might be in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in that inside board. Man, there we go, guy. yeah. Nice today on the paint. Right? That's a chunky bunch. That's a big fish, man. Man, that is a gorgeous brown trout, man. That is a beauty, dude. Payday oh. twice, man. It's not often you get paid twice in one day. We did today, buddy. Heck yeah, that's that color. You call it a payday, huh? Yep. We just put that out and it caught two fish right away. No one can complain on a brown like that. Not man. at all, man. Not at all. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Oh. Nice work, buddy. Let's go get another one. I'm in it. Well, we had a great morning out here on the water fishing, but it's getting a little bit rough, so I think we might call it quits. Jared, thank you very much for fishing with me today. Oh, thanks, buddy. I appreciate you bringing me out here and showing me a piece of your world. That's awesome. It was a lot of fun. Hey, if you've been watching Fishing 4 on 1, we'll see you right here, same place, same time next week. Closed captioning is provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leaders in trolling technology, Yakima Bait, Home of the Rooster Tail. Maxima Fishing Lines, the best line every time. Evinroot Outboards, introducing the E-Tech G2. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Smooth moves, smooth your ride. Pull up tight, oh yeah, look at yeah. that. That's why we're out here. Man, this is a good fish. This is Fish just got off. Come on. Yeah. They got one.